<laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. You're I welcome. appreciate that. I like the Cliff Notes version there, but <laughs> thank you very much. For <laughs> we have not seen a uh, rebid on the parking contracts for our downtown uh, parking <laughs> facilities. Uh, make sure that when we do get to the point of rebidding those contracts, that whatever we do in terms of free parking at that facility or at others is reflected in the RFP. Absolutely. Absolutely. Court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of September the 8th. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> We have, uh, Commissioner Johnson, I see you have a resolution this morning. Yes, I do. And would you read that into the room, please? Yeah. <clears throat> whereas America's culture of diversity remains one of its greatest strengths, and whereas the Hispanic American community has a long and important history of commitment to this nation's core values and the contribution of this community helped to make this country great, and whereas each year America's observe National Hisp Hispanic Heritage Month, from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. And whereas the, obs the observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988, to cover a 30-day period starting on September 15th and ending on October 15th. And whereas the day of September 15th is significant because it is the anniversary of independence for Latin American countries Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, and in addition Mexico and Chile celebrated their independence days on September 16th and September 18th respectively. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby recognize and celebrate National Hispanic Heritage Month, focusing on the many achievements of Hispanic Americans and their contributions to the United States and the world. In witness whereof, we have heretofore set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 15th day of September 2009. I move for its approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And I believe Judge Valdez, J.P. of uh, Precinct Number 5, and Sergio De Leon, Constable Precinct 5, are here to receive this plaque. If you would come forward, please. He's up. <laughs> Judge, thank you very much for being here this you. morning. Excuse me, Judge. Was Richard uh, with you to receive, to help receive that uh, proclamation? Yeah, Richard. And you want to? You may want to introduce your other guests that are here this morning. Well, well, we have uh, Richard Gonzalez, he's a county employee. Uh, Tina Valdez, county employee, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Blood sister. <laughs> uh, Santos Navarrete, Cone of Health, uh, also from Terry County. Wonderful. Um, Welcome. I'll, I'll say a few words and they maybe they want to say. So, first of all, just very briefly, uh, Judge and Commissioners, thank you very much. Uh, of course, for uh, allowing this presentation to be made and, and on the basis of what the contributions are of our Hispanic Americans. Uh, and I'm here to <clears throat> basically uh, just give an appreciation for that in that uh, we have many, many uh, county workers that are do doing some work very diligently and proudly, and we would like to continue uh, to serve in the best way possible for our county to be as as, as the best it can be. And uh, these are just a few of the people that represent that. So thank you very much for for honoring us today on this. Your Honor, members of the court, I want to echo uh, and second what Judge Valdez has said. We do appreciate this recognition. 
because there are so many Latinos that work here in Tarrant County that do very diligent and hard work, and even uh, throughout Tarrant County. Uh, we contribute a great deal across the state and even nationally, I think, to the tune of $225 billion. And so uh, uh, that is something to be uh, reckoned with. And also, uh, you know, Latinos and Hispanic Americans contribute so much. You just look at our artists like Jennifer Lopez and our writers like Sandra Cisneros and, and who can uh, forget our cuisine that we have and that we contribute so much. Um, and also, uh, politically, you know, we are a force to be reckoned with, recorded by both political parties. And in Texas and across the country, you know, we guess we are consuls and JPs, but we're also congressmen and congresswomen governors, senators, uh, cabinet members, and finally a Supreme Court justice. And so I'm uh, just delighted to receive this recognition on behalf of uh, our committee and the Latinos across the county. Now, I know you have a proposal that you've been kind of uh, uh, deliberating about having a Hispanic uh, heritage celebration in front of the administration uh, building. What is model after the city? And I just want to encourage you to take that bold step and to do that so we can celebrate our culture here and to have our cuisine and our talents and, and uh, our mariachi music and so that members of this community can take part of that. I urge you to do that and uh, would be very supportive of your efforts uh, should you proceed with that. So thank you very much for having us here today and uh, we do appreciate the recognition. Thank you. Thank you all. Court members, you have before you the consent agenda, save item uh, 9A11. Move yes, approval of the consent agenda, save item 9A11. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> we have several public hearings um, this morning. Your Honor, we'll begin the first one. This is a, we're asking that the Commissioner's Court conduct a public hearing as it relates to Tarrant County Government uh, fiscal year FY10. Uh, just a, a quick uh, comment about that. Uh, budget is currently set at the general fund at $387,471,681. Road and Bridge Fund is $28,785,000 thousand seven hundred and thirty nine dollars and debt service fund is thirty seven million eight hundred and ninety seven thousand two hundred and thirty three dollars for a total of those three categories of four hundred and fifty four million one hundred and fifty four thousand six hundred and fifty three dollars this is a public hearing I'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak uh, to this particular item there appearing none then I will close the public hearing at this time your Honor, we'll take action on this later in the agenda. Our next public hearing, uh, Ms. Ward. Good morning. Uh, we're requesting to consider an amendment to the program year 2008 for CDBG. In this program year, we allocated $5,000 to the City of Fort Worth for emergency assistance or ESG grant. We had proposed reallocating that to NICA. It's a nonprofit on the north side. However, we did receive an invoice on Friday for $4,600. So we probably will not include that in our amendment request to HUD based on the, um, the eligibility of the costs that were submitted to us on Friday. Our second amendment that we were requesting is to uh, change the scope of services for a project in Crowley. To, from, a, from the reconstruction of 100 and 200 blocks of North Texas Street to a water main replacement on the 400 block of Harvey Street and the 400 block of Glendale Street. We are making these changes to um, expand the scope of services due to stimulus money we received last year. It allowed us to broaden the scope for our regular CDBG project. So we are receiving request citizen participation at this time. Now, all the, the two programs you just mentioned, are they in that first public hearing? Yes. Okay. I will uh, open the public hearing at this point in time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to either of these two items. 
There are appearing none, then I will uh, close the public hearing. We will um, submit our amendment to uh, HUD based on the comments from today, and we'll submit a receiving file to the court. Okay. Thank you. Our next public hearing um, is to, to receive input into the draft of our uh, paper, which is the consolidated uh, report for CDBG, ESG, and HOME. We have a draft that we have on file right now that we're working to reconcile all the numbers, and we will submit that in two weeks. The purpose of today's public hearing is to receive citizen input into our program for the last year. I will open the public hearing at this point in time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this item. None appearing, then I will close the public hearing. Thank you very much. We'll come back probably next week with our caper to submit to for your approval. Okay. Ms. Lamb. Thank you, Judge. I'm here today to request that Commissioner's Court conduct a public consider the um, placement of no parking signs along the north side of 1187. It's located near the west intersection, west of the intersection of FM 1187 and Oak Grove Rendon Road. This is a response to a request from TxDOT for the no parking signs. And if the court authorizes the placement, they will install and maintain the signs. I'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this item. None appearing, I will close the public hearing and seek any action that you may wish at this time. I have a question, Ms. Lamb. What what occasions this request from text dot 1187 is such a busy street that I wouldn't think there, there would be uh, much parking along its... Uh... There is typically not, but there's a business at this location and they've taken to parking some of the cars that they're working out. Their lot is full, so they're parking on the right way. And TxDOT has asked that we put up no parking signs so they can remove those cars and enforce um, what should be the standard up and down that road. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the Court, under the Administrator Section Item A-1, we're requesting that the Commissioner's Court approve the compensation expenses and allowances for certain county and precinct officers as required by Chapter 152 of the Local Government Code. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of the Court, on Item Number 2, we're requesting that the Court approve the Tarrant County Fiscal Year 2010 budget at the highest level cost center and account group categories as listed in your court communication. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And the court on item number three, we're requesting that the court approve Tarrant County government's tax rate for tax year 2009 as follows. Maintenance and operations, 0.234823 per $100 valuation. Interest and sinking, which is a debt service fund of 0 0.029177 uh, per $100 valuation. For a total tax rate for tax year 2009 of 0.264 per $100 valuation. Just a, a note that this tax rate is the same as the current tax rate. And because it actually raises less money than the same tax rate did last year, we are not required to make one of those funny money motions that we've had to do in, in previous years. That's correct. Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? The, the one comment I'd like to make is I would like to thank everybody in this room, from department heads to <coughs> managers to employees, Debbie, you and your staff, for all of the work that you, that all of y'all did in going into and in bringing this budget to us in the shape and in the form that it was, that it was brought to us in. Um, y'all continue to be, I think, excellent managers of the county's taxpayers' money. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that and in conversations with other folks, um, 
how I, I think they're very envious of us uh, because of the jobs that y'all do to, to really efficiently and effectively work with the dollars that, um, that our taxpayers give us. So I really, really want to thank each one of y'all because uh, uh, without your help and without your sacrifice, this would, this would not have been possible. And we were able to do this without uh, uh, having to lay off any employees. And I think that's wonderful. It's horrible that we're not being able to give raises this year, but the economy just won't allow that. But um, congratulations to everybody that participated in this year's budget process. Not only are we not having to lay off employees, we're not having to ask anyone to take furlough days <coughs> right. uh, unpaid as most jurisdictions around here are doing. Most. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of the court, a week ago to item four, we're requesting that the commissioner's court approve the Tarrant County Hospital District's tax rate for tax year 2009 as follows. Maintenance and operations, point two two six two five five per $100 valuation. Interest in sinking, which is debt service, at point zero zero one six four two per one hundred dollar valuation for a total tax rate for tax year two thousand nine of point two two seven eight nine seven per one hundred dollar valuation as with the county's uh, tax rate this tax rate is also the same rate as it is currently move for approval second we have a motion and a second any discussion when are we going to actually uh, see their budget they are, are going to have their final budget uh, uh, meeting tonight. Uh, they should bring it to us either next Tuesday, but no later than the 29th. We're scheduled to pass their budget on the 29th. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. It was a a week ago to item number five. We're requesting that the commissioner's court approve the Tarrant County Emergency Services District Number One uh, fiscal year budget of FY10 and the tax rate of 0 .064 per $100 value for tax year 2009. This maintains the current tax rate for the Emergency Services District. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of the court, if we could go to item six. We're requesting that the court approve the uh, sheriff and constable fee schedule for calendar year uh, 2010. And we have two additional fees that we're adding. The other fees remain the same. One includes a CAPUS civil fee of $80 and another one, a new writ called the writ of Resta restoration, which is a $80 fee also. Staff is requesting and recommending approval. Where did those two fees come from? Are they legislatively uh, passed? Yes. Yeah, the, the first one, the Cape of Civil Fee, is, is a new fee under child support, and um, it's under uh, the family code. And um, the uh, writ of restoration is a new legislative act that they're requesting that we place a fee on. This commissioner's court, all commissioner's court, have to set those fees in September for it to be effective. Uh, January 1st. So where does the revenue go? Revenue goes to the general fund. Is it mandatory or permissive? We have to provide the service, and we have the authority to set a fee for that service. And don't we, doesn't it also recommend that the fees be, they also talk to, I thought the fact that the fee needed to be the same as, there's, there's corresponding uh, a writ of, it's basically, it's, like a, it's basically the same type of action. possession on yes, one. Sir. Yes, sir. And then uh, so something along that type of line. So they're similar to other things. Absolutely. And in determining how much these fees are, we do meet with the, the sheriff, the, all the constables, the district attorney's office, the district clerk's office, the county clerk's office, in an attempt to make sure that the, the, fee, that, the, the fee that we set allows us to only to recover our cost of service. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously.
Members of the Court, on item number seven, we're requesting that the Court accept a donation from TXU uh, through the Texas Trees Foundation for 25 30-gallon trees to be placed at the Resource Connection. Move approval with great appreciation to TXU. Second with the same appreciation. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Finally, members of the Court, on item number eight, we're requesting that the that the Commissioner's Court approve the issuance of revenue bonds by the Red River Health Facilities Development Corporation on behalf of the City of <coughs> Winthorpe, Texas, to finance and or refinance the acquisition of health equipment for care flight in maximum principal amount not to exceed $6 million and to sign the necessary orders. Uh, the, the reason that they're asking us to do that is that the equipment is being located for care flight in Grand Prairie, which is in Tarrant County. Therefore, it's, we, we simply need to approve this issuance. It does not affect uh, I, or it does not create any liability for the county. Are we talking helicopters here? Helicopters and ambulances, yes. Move approval. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Stidwell? <coughs> This morning we're requesting that the Commissioner's Court receive and call the Auditor's report of cash counts for the three months ended June 30th, 2009. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second any discussion. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. I assume there are no irregularities in that report. Yes, sir. Right. Ms. Glenn. Cool you today. Our first item is a request that you receive and file the personnel agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our second item is requesting approval for a waiver of terminal benefits for the 325th District Court. Uh, the court reporter is going to leave on September the 18th with approximately 119 hours of vacation time. And due to the critical nature of having a court reporter, they have asked that this a waiver be granted at the cost of $5,087.02, excluding fringe benefit. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our final item is we're requ requesting approval of plan choices, service provider changes, and renewals and the contribution <coughs> rates for funding for employee and retiree health care benefits for plan year 2010. And remember that a plan year for our health care is a calendar year, so these will be effective in January. Okay, and we have quite a few um, exhibits to go through in explaining what we want you all to approve. Exhibit A is our service provider changes and renewals. Those items highlighted in yellow are either changes or reductions in cost. The first two items are actually changes related to our dental health care. In 2009, our dental HMO was safeguard and will be going with Assurant in 2010, which is the old United Dental Plan. And then our PEBC plan, which was previously Carrington or is currently Carrington, will be recommended to go to Delta Dental and that will be an enhanced plan. And the remainder of the items on there are our um, provider renewals, and those, as I said before, are high, that are highlighted in yellow are reductions. So we have quite a few reductions. If you go to Exhibit B, and I'll be glad to entertain questions if anyone has questions as we go along. Go to Exhibit B. <coughs> this is the, both the employee and retiree contribution rate for the PEBC dental plan. Okay. And this will have a few enhancements and we will be br bringing you our plan design changes both for our dental and some of our other plans at a later date. Okay. And then if you go to exhibit C1, this is the contribution rates for our active employees. And one of the key things to note is the HMO will no longer exist in 2010. We will have the EPO and the PPO plans which are both fully uh, self-funded plan. The blue column is the current 2009 rates, with the yellow column being the proposed rates for 2010. 
We did choose to uh, charge the same rates for the PPO and the EPO. And so for those um, employees, that they'll either be a status quo in the cost or there will be a re rate reduction. Any questions about that? No? But they're, they're going to have to make a decision. Correct. The, if you're they in the are, HMO, you're going to have to make a decision to move into the EPO or the PPO. That's correct. The HMO will no longer exist, so those employees will have to make a selection. And they are priced the same so that employees will make their choice based on plan design. Because the, there are so many changes in our plans this year, we will, we will be having employee meetings probably in late October and early November. Since the HMO is going away, there are going to be some plan changes to the EPO. The dental insurance is changing. Uh, we plan to go out and discuss that with our employees. But one of the things that everybody needs to understand is even though the premiums are the same, there is the potential if you end up in the hospital or certainly if you're out of network that, that you will pay much more if you're a part of the PPO plan than what you will pay if you're a part of the EPO plan. That is a possibility, yes, sir. And that really the PPO plan offers maybe more doctors that you may or may not uh, like to use, but the consequences, again, if you end up in the hospital or um, in, in some other instances, could be much more out-of-pocket costs than what would be in the EPO plan. May have any other questions about the active? We'll go to Exhibit C2, page 1. This is our pre-65 retirees, and this is our matrix plan. Okay? What we did is we took the 2009 EPO rate and increased it by 5%. And as you'll notice, the employee or the retirees are responsible for the set. There's a, a cost share based on years of service. And the gray column indicates the census of, those, of how many retirees we have in each of those groups. And the white columns indicate the either cost increase or decrease in the premium for those particular plans based on years of service. Okay. The next exhibit, exhibit C2, page 2, this is also our pre-65 group, and this is the grandfathered group. You might remember back in 2005 when we went to the matrix, we took a group and uh, created this grandfathered group, and basically whichever plan is less is, is the one that they fall under. This group is becoming smaller as these employees become 65. They move into the, the post-65 group. The current census on this is 55 individuals. What we did with this rate is we took the 2009 EPO rate again and increased it by 15%. And so the yellow column indicates what the current 2009 rate and the Aqua column indicates what the 2010 rates are. Okay? And then our um, next exhibit is C3, and this is our Medicare eligible group, which is our post-65, and those individuals that uh, may also be Medicare eligible that are not post-65. This is a fully insured, these are fully insured plans offered by Pacificare. And what we did this year, again, the blue column is the 2009 rate, the yellow column is the proposed rate, and the white column indicates the cost increases on premiums. We did pay, pass on the rate increases for these individuals as we have in the past. And in addition to that, you'll notice at the bottom we have a recommended policy of change that would go into effect uh, January 1st for those employees who retire from January 1st, 2010 forward that have between zero and nine years of Tarrant County service, they will not receive a subsidy on their retiree insurance. They will pay 100% of those costs. And that's a proposal that is provided for you. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. You might point out that there's no one in that category, the less than Currently. 10 year. There's Currently no one there is not. So that change will not affect any, any current retirees. Right. And it's effective from January forward. So those, those individuals, and we chose January so that those individuals that were contemplating retirement right now that might fall in that category would have the opportunity to consider this change in making that decision. And as I said before, there are some going to be um, some plan changes both to our EPO and our dental plans. We do have a board meeting with the PEBC in September. Uh, 23rd to discuss the EPO plan changes, and we will bring those plan changes back to you for your consideration. 
and we will have the employee meetings in addition to that. So this is not an action item today? Yes, sir. This is, is an action is. item for the for the, the rights and the provider renewals. But there and will the, be some changes that, may be, that we may be approving later on with regards yes, to the EPO plan. And, and the one policy change also is an action item today. Yes, sir, the policy and change. Just want to make sure on that it's not zero to nine, it's less than ten years. Correct. I move approval of all of the above. I'll second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you and a bunch of other people who are sitting in this room for a lot of work over the last year on uh, continuing to work on, on where we are in this particular area. It is a difficult area to, uh, to get into. Uh, next is public health, and I understand that Mr. Navarati is going to uh, take care of that this morning. Welcome, sir. Good morning. Uh, we've got uh, one item for the court's consideration this morning from Public Health. Uh, request approval and assignment and assumption of Tarrant County contracts between, between Tarrant County AIDS Interfaith Network, Incorporated, and AIDS Outreach Center, Incorporated. I will move approval of uh, this assignment and assumption of contracts. I think the merger of these two agencies will bring about efficiencies in AIDS service delivery to our community. However, I've got a caveat, and that is that the shrinkage in the number of organizations should not be an excuse to shrink the amount of service that is given to minority communities in Tarrant County. Uh, these services are woefully uh, inadequate compared to the numbers of minorities who suffer from AIDS and the amount of dollars that are ad allocated to this community. I continue to be dissatisfied with the service plan, uh, but um, this is something we need to do. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, sir. Mr. Beecham. You got any more of them little Razorback stickers around? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Is he the culprit? Sir? He's the culprit. Yeah, the tiger ate that Razorback you put on my... <laughs> back window of my truck last week. I don't know why you think I'd be involved in something like that. <laughs> because Renee Lamb back there still looks innocent. <laughs> Just briefly. Well, Sergio De Leon is a fellow Arkansan. Renee is a little Razorback. Renee is a couple in her office. And, and yeah, but you were on video. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a camera. Well, climbing in the back of that truck. That yeah, see, that was the other thing. You could reach Renee would have had to climb in the back of the truck. We're going to cancel that contract. <laughs> we have Ford. I thought you were collecting SEC mascots. I had one that you didn't have. So. We have four items for your consideration this morning. Um, our first item is a bid award recommendation for RFP number 2009-092. This is an RFP for transportation services for the Juvenile Justice Alternative Education Program. Recommendation will be to award to Durham School Services on a pre enterprise basis. For approval, we're also seeking contract approval from the court. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our second item is also a bid award recommendation for RFP number 2009 094. This is an RFP for behavioral risk, sur uh, risk factor surveillance survey for the Public Health Department. Recommendation will be toward the Clearwater Research Incorporated, amount of $188,930. Move for approval. A second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our third item is also a bid, a bid award recommendation for RFP number 2009 111. Uh, 
Uh, this is an RFP for photostat image conversion for the county clerk's office. Recommendation will be toward the uh, Record Services Incorporated on a pre enterprise basis. Again, we're seeking contract approval if approved. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Now, last time there's also a bid award recommendation for bid number 2009 146. This is a annual contract for geotextile paving fabrics. Recommendation will be to award a pre enterprise basis, awarding to a company called First Source America. Move approval. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Ms. Lamb. Yeah, she'd have had to crawl in the back of that truck. She couldn't have reached it. So uh, you're safe. Appreciate that. I'm here today to request that Commissioner's Court adopt the new FEMA flood insurance rate maps that will be effective on September the 25th. 2009. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. <coughs> motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Any appointments? You have before you the claims, including the addendum. <coughs> Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> briefing items, Mr. Maines? Your Honor, we do not have any briefing items at this time. At this time, we'll, Commissioner's Court will proceed to um, our closed session to discuss items exempted under Sections 551.071, 072, 074, 076, and 087 of the Texas Government Code. Having returned from closed session, we'll now address the following matter. Under item E1, we're requesting authorization for the receipt of a check in the amount of $217.93 and subrogation recovery. Move for approval of acceptance. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. With regard to item number two, we're requesting authorization for the judge to sign and for uh, the county district, for the district attorney's office to file a third party payor claim. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. That's all. There being no further business, we're adjourned.